I'm going to go ahead and take some time and just do a, a quick general studio update and talk about some of the equipment we use to make videos here and some of the changes we've made recently. Uh, the first and most obvious is we're no longer using this normally fantastic 12 to 40 millimeter um, Yi zoom lens. And part of that is just due to the size of my current studio. It wasn't providing a wide enough shot for videos. Um, as you may remember, it, if I had had this blue mat in a video, and I believe I did during my review of those Arico USB hubs, um, there just wasn't a ton that I could fit in the frame. And that wasn't normally an issue if I was talking about something small like this lens, which I may actually use if I have a small enough object for review um, going forward. But when I wanted to do larger pieces that involved having to have things like my laptop in the view, uh, it just wasn't wide enough. So we've gone ahead and we've moved from this. And although I considered using one of these adapters to basically adjust its focal length. Um, at 12 millimeters, that didn't really work. What ended up happening was I, I got a lot of vignetting in the corners. Um, so we've gone ahead and I purchased the SLR Magic 8 millimeter lens. And although the f-stop of four is a little bit on the, the high side compared to what I'm used to using, um, I want to say this was like a 3.5, which was even still high. I normally go for faster prime lenses when I can. Um, it's still perfectly fine. Text is readable if I lay this down. Uh, you should be able to read the curved text on this lens here. Um, although you, depending on your viewing platform may have to zoom in. Um, I know 4K video and phones particularly doesn't always play nicely. Um, some of the other things that we've updated, and I don't know how obvious it is, I'm, I'm hoping it carries through quite well, is we now have stereo sound. Uh, as much as I love my NW700, I only have one of them, and the same thing applies to my Beach Tech mixer. It only has one Phantom Power port. So with the purchase of an Audio 2000 mixer, which there should be an unboxing video and even a teardown that preceded this, go ahead and check that out, by the way. Um, this is a, a normal, I should say more conventional mixer. It's meant to be used in a setting like this as opposed to my previous mixer, which was a field mixer that would bolt under the camera. In addition, I have a pair of Audio-Technica Pro 44 boundary microphones. Um, I'm not going to say that these are inherently ideal, but they're not necessarily the wrong type of microphone for this either. They're meant to be used on a flat surface like a table uh, in a conference room or on a, a stage if you're recording some kind of performance there. And Let me go ahead and just... So this is one of those Audio-Technica Pro 4 form boundary microphones. Um, but these still do have a cardioid pattern. They record towards the front and out on the sides. It's not necessarily as focused as the NW700 or uh, my shotgun microphone is, but I, I've put one in each corner pointed towards the center of the recording area to keep things in stereo. And although that's not necessarily important to most of my videos, if I review a product that ever makes any kind of sound, um, it is gonna be nice to be able to hear that things change as it rotates and it's not just spitting out mono sound. Um, so I have a pair of these. I, I really like the design on these microphones. I wish more stuff used this mini XLR connector that they use. Um, pretty fancy little thing. Beyond that, um, moving to the AMX7303 mixer gives me a lot more control over volume. It, it's right here where I can reach it, although I realize that's off screen. We'll 
You know, I, I, it's got sliders on it, which I really like sliders for volume control. They, they feel like I have more control than potentiometers do. Um, I've gone ahead and put some echo reducing foam on either side of the studio and around the microphones. I know especially during some of my earlier videos um, that there was a little bit of echo here. And part of that is my studio, although it was purpose built for this when I moved in, is still actually, you know, poured concrete that was here in the house when we purchased it. Um, concrete reflects sound very well and transferred sound very well. So I get a fair bit of noise out of that. Um, I'm still using just an LG tablet as a monitor off to the side here for the E1. I would love to get a dedicated HDMI monitor for it. I would still end up using a tablet like this as a control. Um, going forward, I'd you know, like to get a higher resolution tablet. This is just an LG bargain tablet that I think I traded a video card for. I didn't even actually spend money on it. And even then, I think it was just whatever AT&T was giving away for free uh, from the per person I purchased it from. So nothing special there. Uh, most of the equipment in our studio at this point is going to stay in the studio. The mixer and these boundary mics aren't going to go anywhere. If I ever do any field recording, um, it'll either be using the NW700 or my shotgun microphone, and that will be through the Beach Tech mixer. Um, I've got a, a permanent power source on my overhead C stand for my E1. Um, we're still using that 64 gig Lexar micro SD, although if you saw the Canvas card lineup being reviewed, the React Plus is going to give that Luxar card a run for its money. It's only taken, what, three, four years for some of the other manufacturers to really catch up, but uh, they finally are. So, beyond that, thank you for taking the time to watch this. Like I said, I just wanted to go through some of the bits and pieces that have changed. Hopefully this carries forward and you as the viewers notice an increase in the quality of some of the videos just due to a little bit extra attention paid to the equipment. Uh, if you have any questions about why we picked one piece of equipment over another, feel free to ask in the comments below. I want to go ahead and do a shout out for Alextrix for our opening and closing theme music, and I want to go ahead and do a special thanks to our patrons who really do help uh, bring some of the content that we just love to produce for everybody, be it reviews, be it stuff like this where we've made changes to the studio, articles about just general news stuff. Um, we absolutely adore our patrons. And there will be a link to that in the description below as well if you're interested in checking that out.